Hello everyone, so today's video is going to be kind of more of a glorified experiment of sorts. Um, I've been wanting to do a little bit more with my ESU Ecos. Um, I also picked up the Ecos, uh, well it's not called the Ecos, but the ESU cab control system. Which came out probably about a year ago or so. Which uh, utilizes the 7 amp booster here, which is this piece and this kind of like wireless box here which everything plugs into and there's no uh, kind of like hardwired throttles you basically use everything with one of the same thing as the mobile control too but I picked it up used for about 300 bucks normally these go for about 250 on their own so I wanted one of these anyway so at worst I got a backup DCC system for 50 bucks so can't really beat that Main reason I've been wanting one of these is so that I can control more than two trains at a time. Now, of course, on the Ecos, I can do, I think, five on each side, but I have to switch back and forth between them. I can't actually do them one by one at a time. So, of course, I could get more of these, but I actually don't really care for these as much as I thought I would. Um, I also thought about getting possibly two Ecos, but that's very expensive as they cost about 600 bucks. So, uh, and I thought maybe I could get like two of those and kind of daisy chain them together and have it work that way, which you might be able to do. I don't know. I also thought that maybe I could connect um, both systems together using one of these Ecos link cables, but it appears these are only for boosters, which uh, didn't seem to be really a way of wiring the two of them together to get them to talk. Uh, one of the other problems I've been having is to load locomotive art onto this. I have to physically disconnect it and take it into another room because that's where my router is. So this whole setup here um, doesn't really have internet. Um, under this little part here I have a wireless uh, range extender. Which has an ethernet port out. Um, but there's only one of them so doesn't really allow me the ability to hook the laptop up to it or to hook directly into the Ecos. I kind of have to do everything one at a time or take something into another room. So I picked up this cheap router today for about 30 bucks. So the idea is that I can put this under there and then kind of tie all this together. Uh, the end objective is that I want to be able to run additional throttles with... Uh, there's actually apps you can put on your phone and actually use your phone as an additional throttle. So I want the ability to do that, which I can't do currently. And uh, also possibly um, find a way of maybe marrying these two systems together to get to work as one. I don't really know how that's going to work, so this could be a little bit lengthy. And it's uh, pretty much all going to be a big experiment, so we'll see what happens. So for the next part here, what I'm going to try to do is, uh, I've actually had this piece for quite some time, um, but this is basically going to connect and share from my main router, which is in a different room, and then output the internet through this wire into the router. So I have it plugged into the internet port there. And then with my other wired ports here, that's going to go... The laptop shouldn't need a wired connection, but should I need one, I can plug in there. So we'll have the mobile control system and the Ecos will both uh, be plugged into this. And this is basically going to share out the internet that it's receiving from another room. At least that's the idea anyway. And then uh, got a couple other short ethernet wires here. So I'm going to attempt to first get this working and then get the router set up and verify that it's working through a wired connection on here and then I should be ready to wire in all of the other stuff. Software updates because nobody can build anything properly the first time. So we're down below the layout and what we have going on here is the wireless range extender is plugged into the internet in of the router and then out from the router there's a hard line you can't really see it too well that gray one there that goes back along here and then that goes back way back along around the outside all the way over where the ecos is and then i can probably plug in the uh 
other system right here too. So I'm going to do that here and then we'll do some testing. Okay, so we're back with the Ecos here and a couple of changes that I had to make here. And I'll just exit out of this and show you how I got to it as I had to go to the settings. And under the first panel, IP. And how I had this previously set before when I had this hooked up just to the uh, range extender is that I had to have the spawn DHCP server checked. And when you did that, then it unchecked the get IP settings from DHCP. And then on here, I had to just type in the IP address. But when I changed these settings, my IP address changed because I'm running off of the router now instead of what I was, was running off of before. And when I did that, then my throttle connected up fine. And the throttle is now running on that wireless router as well. So really nothing is running off of the Wi-Fi that's created by the range extender. Everything is running through the router. So now, for the next experiment, is going to be to hook this sucker, um, give it power, and then also run an Ethernet cable from here over into the router. And then we'll see if anything talks to each other. So it would appear from uh, what I've found out here is it doesn't seem like there's a way of linking these systems. Uh, I was hoping that I could basically use this as my power because this has 7 amps and that system only has 4. So I was kind of hoping that I could just use this as basically throttles only and link to this system. But it doesn't appear that that's a possibility. So for now, it doesn't look like I'm going to use this piece at all um, or the power supply for it. So for the next thing, um, because I know that this will talk to that, uh, even without this part in the loop there. So the next thing is going to be to try to get the computer to talk directly to this over my Ethernet cable and use the computer as a throttle because I believe there's some software you can download to try to get that to work. And then after that, then we'll try to be uh, using some cell phones as additional throttles with an app which I wasn't able to get working before, but I think I might be able to now. Okay, so no luck with getting the computer interface to run, so the next thing to try is going to be the phone. So the idea here is that I'm able to use my phone as an additional throttle. So my phone is going to be connecting into the Wi-Fi router that I just hooked up, and then that's going to be talking to this. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is switch Wi-Fi's. And I named my new Wi-Fi for the train dedicated things, the ESU one here. And once it's connected, I can launch the app. Which, this is a free app in the App Store. It's just called Ecos Controller. There are others that are out there. Uh, if you just type in Ecos... There's a couple that come up. But we'll go ahead and launch this one. Uh, one thing that it didn't show here initially is that I did have to enter in the IP address, which I just entered in this one here under the configuration here which you can see it right there. I didn't need to change the port um, didn't mess with any of this other stuff here. I don't know what this does, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. So yeah, it's connected. And it's actually a really, really fast interface. So I'm going to go ahead and select my J1 here. And with any luck, I should be able to get this to fire up. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's give it a little uh, horn blast here.
It does appear a little bit hard to dial in a specific speed step. I don't know if it go. Oh yeah, you can. All right. That allows for a little more precision. And you can really only control one at a time. You can't do like a split screen or anything like that. I'll go ahead and mute it with F8. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch trains to my T1. <laughs> very cool uh i honestly gotta say i actually like this a ton better than what the mobile control 2 is uh this is something that i mean you can pick up the android phones for 50 bucks um you know even less than that and this thing is 250 dollars and to be honest, it's uh, based on a really old version of Android, and it's super laggy. Uh, way bigger than it needs to be. Uh, I'll probably only keep this to run the, uh, uh, basically the backup DCC system, now the cap control system. I don't think I'm going to purchase any more of those. Uh, I actually prefer this much better. I mean, I can even pick up Amazon Fire tablets for 50 bucks and run this app on there and I think that would be a superior experience to use in this. Um, so I might try out some of the other apps here and maybe do a future review on it. But uh, I guess that kind of concludes this uh, ESU experiment. Uh, I have to say I'm a, I didn't you know expect to be able to kind of merge the cap control system with this one. So I'm not surprised that that didn't work. Um, I mean, I think it achieved what I wanted to, which is the ability to take locomotive art on here and then transport it to here without having to move my whole set setup all the way over to the computer over there or try to run a wire across the room and make a real mess. So I don't have to do any of that. I can keep everything where it is now. And then also now I have the ability to use extra phones as throttles, and that is extremely cheap to do. Um, so now I'll be able to run pretty much as many trains as I want to with individual dedicated throttles. So that, I, I really, really like that part of it. And I have to say this app, I mean, it, it functionally, it does everything that you needed to do. But uh, I guess that wraps up this one for now. And I hope maybe it sheds some light on some of these questions. Uh, to be honest, a lot of this was trial and error on my part because there's just not a lot of instructions out there about this system. And the manuals don't always tell you everything you need to know, or some of the other YouTube videos out there are either done in very poor English or sometimes not in English at all. So I hope that gives you a little more capability on what you can do with these systems. Um, I really, really love this system. I mean, I much prefer it over NCC or Digitrax. I mean, those systems feel like they're 20 years old in comparison to this one. So, I mean, for DCC, I really feel like this is the way to go. But it is a little pricey, so it's not for everyone, but I'm really happy I made the move, and now I'm getting everything I want out of it. So that's it for this one.